Welcome to another episode of Spaghetti Westerns Podcast. This is uh, Season 4, Episode 8, total number 93. Today we're going to get into some rare, unusual, and even the actors, you'll know who they are, but you don't know too much about them. So we're going to talk about Four Bullets for Joe. That's a rarity. We're going to talk about whatever happened to Diana Loris. Uh, Who are those guys? Lewis and Dooney. And Film of the Week. A uh, small gem of the of the genre, Banditos. Got uh, CD of the week. This is actually a series. Got autograph of the week, book of the week, and I've got a few posters to show you. So let's get going. Uh, Four Bullets for Joe. This is a Spanish, Italian, French film co-production. Produced by C. Phoenix Films out of Madrid, Silver Bem out of Rome, and Eurocene out of Paris. Uh, the Spanish title is Cuatro Balazos, also Sonoran Cuatro Balazos. Italian title is El Vindicatore di Kansas, Kansas City. C. Ud Durano, Cuatro Colpi di Fusil, uh, Italian. French title is Four Ballas por Joe. English title, Shots Ring Out, and Four Bullets for Joe is the uh, USA title. Uh, this is a small film, and it's uh, very different from the ones that you'll were, were used to. It's not filmed in Madrid or that area of northern Spain or Almeria. Uh, it's very green. It's filmed in an area called Guadalupe. And the first thing I thought, oh, uh, I'm sorry, Guadalajara. The first thing I thought, oh, it's Guadalajara. It's Mexico. No, nope. there's a Guadalajara, Spain. And I thought with Fernando Casanova, that's a Spanish or a Mexican actor. This is a Mexican Western, especially when I saw it, but it's not. Uh, the producer is Santos Alcocer. The director is Agustin Navarro. Screenplay is by Fernando Galeana, Julio Porter, Vittorio Vigi, Mario Guerrera, Jose Malorqui. Cinematography is by Ray Torres, whose real name is Ricardo Nunez. It's an Eastman color in widescreen. Music is Manuel Parada. And there's a song, Sonoran Cuatro Balazo, sewn by Ferris Quilla. And he's in it as a drunk. Um, the cast consists of Sheriff Paul, played by Fred Kano. That's uh, Fernando Casanova. Frank Dalton, played by Pierre, Paul Piaget, who is, as we know, is a regular in the early Spanish westerns. John, played by Frank Moran. Margaret, played by Barbara Nelly. And some of the other regulars that you'll recognize are Jose Riesgo, plays Richard. Um, Tito Garcia, of course, plays Herrero. Miguel Del Castillo as Jim. Tulio Altamira as a banker. And the story goes as such. Katie Dalton, played by Liz Potel, is sentenced to be hanged for killing the man with whom she is, was leaving the country. After the verdict is given, she makes a desperate attempt to escape the courtroom and ends up under the wheels of a wagon and dies, still declaring her innocence. Her brother Frank shows up, played by, by Paul Paget, a famous gunman, arrives in town to avenge her. Coincidentally, with his arrival, a series of mysterious murders begins the victims of which are the jurors who voted for the condemnation of Katie. Sheriff Paul, played by Fred Kano, investigates, not entirely convinced that the culprit is Frank. He discovers clues leading him to suspect his best friend John, played by Frank Moran, who eventually confesses that he has been the killer out of jealousy over Katie and that he wished to avenge her death by killing the jurors who had convicted her of murder. The sheriff realizes that John is insane and tries to arrest him. John escapes and is mortally wounded by Frank. Before dying, he asks for forgiveness from everyone. Uh, As I said, this is a more murder mystery than action western, so be prepared for mostly drama than gunfights. Mostly the gunplay is the assassination of the jurors. 
This is a rare Spanish-French Spanish co-production with filming taking place in Barranco de la Hoz, Guadalajara, Castilla, La Mancha, Spain, in the western town set of Golden City. That's the fistful of dollars town. Much different green scenery than we are accustomed to is seen in Almer as we not are accustomed to see in Almeria makes it feel different than the usual desert locations we're used to. More like an American Western than a spaghetti Western, it looks more like a TV film. Costumes also look very much like we've become to expect in American Westerns and Mexican Ranchero films. The score by Manuel Parada detracts from the film as it is inappropriate for this type of film. There's a big question mark on, again, whether Manuel Parada did a lot of these scores or he was used like the CSC actors in Italy just as a tax write-off and they used his name. Uh, this is only available on a French DVD. Uh, actor profiles, Sheriff Paul, played by friend Kanao, whose real name is Fernando Gutierrez Lopez, was born on November 24, 1925 in Guadalajara, Mexico. He was a writer, singer, film, and TV actor. As Fernando Casanova, he began his career during the golden age of Mexican cinema and in the 1960s reached the height of his success, becoming one of the most popular actors of the time. He appeared in 190 films, TV, and videos. He appeared in one other spaghetti western as the Coyote in The Sign of the Coyote in 1963. Frank Dalton is played by Paul Piaget. Paul Piaget Ducaroy, born in 34, died in 1985, was discovered was covered previously in episode number 67. John, Frank, played by Frank Moran, Francisco Moran Ruiz was born in Amadovar del Rio, Cordoba, Andalusia, Spain, on November 9, 1930. Commonly known as Paco Moran, he was mainly a stage and TV actor who also did some dubbing. He did appear in several films, including six spaghetti westerns, usually as a villain. He died in Barcelona on July 23, 2012. Barbara Nelly was born Barbara Nelly, but the spelling is, her real name is N-E-L-L-I, not N-E-L-L-Y. She was or is an Italian film and TV actress who appeared in only 15 films between 1964 and 1970. She appeared in two other spaghetti westerns and two western TV western films. She dropped out of acting to run an antique shop in Rome with her husband, actor Giampero Letera, who appeared as the sheriff in 1969's Death on High Mountain, starring Peter Lee Lawrence. Whether she's alive or passed away, I cannot find any reference to it. Okay, let's talk about whatever became of Diana Loris. <laughs> Diana Loris, a fan favorite, was born Ana Maria Cazoria Vega. She was born in Madrid, Spain on October 20, 1940. She began her career as a model using the name Diana Loris as homage to Gina Lola Brigida. This led to a film career beginning in 1960. Loris would appear early on what on with directors such as Mariana Ozores and Juan Bosch and Jess Franco. She was sometimes credited as Lucy Bonet and became one of the most sensual Fr Spanish actresses in the 1960s, appearing in thrillers, comedies, adventure, horror, and westerns. She was also seen in a few stage plays at this time before turning to television in the late 1960s and won a Premio or Premio Andes Award for Best Supporting Actress for her work in La Familia Perez in 1969. In 2008, she received a Lifetime Achievement Award at the Monte Carlo TV Festival. She retired from films in the film industry in 1978. She then married and had two children, a boy and a girl. In all, she appeared in over 60 films and TV series, with 19 being spaghetti westerns. In 2007, she came out of retirement for one day only to film three short scenes in Un Hombre de Porvenir, the film was shown a couple of times in 2010, but was never widely released. 
Some of her more famous screen appearances in spaghetti westerns are Gunfighters of Casa Grande in 1963 is as Gaetana. Murrieta in 63 as Kate. The Texican in 66 as Kid O'Neill with Artie Murphy. Via Rides in 67 in Emilieta with Yul Brenner, uh, Robert Mitchum, and Charles Bronson. Badman's River in 71 as Dolores with her idol Gina Lola Brigida and Lee Van Cleef. Chino in 73, she plays an Indian. In 75, she plays Princess Elizabeth Maria in Get Mean. And she finished her California spaghetti western career in 1977 in California as Jasmine. Okay, let's talk about who are those guys. Okay, who are those guys? This is probably one of the most pro prolific of the spaghetti western character actors, Louis and Dooney. Louis and Dooney Radici was born in Romano di Lombardi, Italy on March 5, 1920. And Dooney fought on the Axis side during World War II. In 1948, he fled Italy and took refuge in Spain, living in Barcelona in the greatest of poverty, even sleeping on the street. Uh, since he probably went to uh, into the army at a young age, I don't know what he did uh, prior to that, whether he worked, whether he went into uh, studying in the university or what. You can only find out about what happened to him once he went to Barcelona. Uh, he started out in the movies doing cleaning jobs and a janitor for Ignacio Aquino in exchange for being able to sleep in the studios at night. He got a start in movies as an extra in the late 1940s where he appeared under the names Louis Green, Louis Hindooney, Louis Hindooney, L-E-W-I-S, Albert Lockwood, and Andrew Scott. His roles increased in the 1950s and he was given more screen time but still a character actor. He became a Spanish citizen in 1959 and because of his blonde hair and fair complexion, he could pass for an American and became one of the most frequently seen character actors of the Spaghetti Western era. He made a total of 49 Westerns and along with John Bartha was typecast as a lawman most of the time. He was also seen as ranchers and townsmen. Later in his career, he would appear in several Paul Nashie horror films during the 1970s. In all, he appeared in nearly 200 films and TV appearances before his death in Barcelona, Spain, on December 31, 1979. Some of Induni's more famous appearances are as Seven from Texas in 1964 as Donald. His first Spaghetti Western appearance was in 64 as John Price and Billy the Kid. In 66, 65, he appear, appeared as a sheriff in $100,000 for Ringo. Also as Sheriff Luke in the Relentless Four, as Bill Monter or Mon, Mon, Monter, M-O-N-T-E-R or M-O-U-N-T-E-R, in The Fury of Johnny Kidd in 66, as Morris in 67 for A Few Bullets More, as Doc Grayson in 69 in Goringo, 1970 Commissioner Harry T. Collier in Captain Apache in 1970, also in 70 played the Sheriff, in Have a Nice Funeral, My Friend, 71, he played Sheriff of Winfrey. As in the Ballad of Ben and Charlie, also in 71, he was in The Legend of Frenchie King. 74, he played Robson, or Robson brother, in The White, the Yellow, and the Black. In 74, that was his final Spaghetti Western. Okay, now we'll go to the film of the week. Okay, the film of the week is a small gem in my opinion. It's Banditos. It's an Italian-Spanish co-production with epic film out of Rome and Hesperia film out of Madrid. The Italian title is Crepatua Che Vivo Io, 
or Las Pistola de la Vendetta, also called Banditos. Spanish title is Banditos. In the UK, it was called Guns of Death. In the USA, it was called You Die, I Live, and Banditos. It was directed by Max Dillman. Real name is Massimo Dalamano. Screenplay was by Juan Cobos and Romano Migliorini, Gian Battista Musetto. Cinematography was by Emilio Forescott. It's in Technicolor and Technoscope. Music is by Agisto Machi. And there's a song called La Bala. Ballada del Train, the Ballad of the Train, sung by Nico Fidenko. The main actors are Richard Martin, played by Enrico Maria Salerno, Ricky Schott, or Philip Raymond, played by Terry Jenkins, Betty Starr, or Betty Stewart, played by Maria Martin, Billy Kane is played by Ven Venantino Venantini, and some more recognizable names. There's a Venganzo henchman played by Scar Claudio Scarcilli and Sandro Scarcilli, brothers. Chris Huerto plays Vingonza. Uh, Kramer played by Marco Guglielmi. Train conductor is by Victor Israel. The train porter is played by Antonio Pica. And the story goes as such. During a train holdup, Richard Martin, played by, again by Enrico Maria Salerno, who's a circus sharpshooter, tries to resist the attempts of the bandits after they have massacred all the passengers, and they leave him with both hands mangled. After trying to operate a trick shooting show and not finding a star gunman, he finds and teaches a young protege, Philip Raymond, who is an escaped prisoner looking for the man who is responsible for his prison sentence, even though he was innocent of the charges brought against him. He's renamed Ricky Shot. He's played by Terry Jenkins. To cover his identity, he's taught the tricks of the trade. Together, Martin and Shot tour the West, giving shooting exhibitions until they run into Billy Kane, played by Venantino Venantini, the leader of the outlaws who maimed Martin during the train robbery. When Martin is killed trying to take his revenge, he is avenged by Shot, who has his own reason for killing Kane as he's the man he's been searching for. This is filmed on location in Colmenar Viejo, Manzaneros del Rio, and La P Pedrizi, Madrid, Spain. The town set is Dino De Laurento Cinematography Studios in Rome, Lazio, Italy. And another, and another small gem often overlooked by the spaghetti western genre. Director Dalamano was a cinematographer for Sergio Leone on Fistful of Dollars under the alias Jack Dalmas. He learned his craft well as this is a fine-looking film and filled with what we expect in the best spaghetti westerns. The ending is similar to that of Day of Anger, where Ricky Schott uses and repeats the lessons he learned from Richard Martin as he tracks down and eliminates Billy Kane. An excellent performance by Enrico Maria Salerno stands out, and fine performances from the supporting cast make it a must-see. Excellent photography and a nice score add to your viewing pleasure. The Italians and Spaniards had little to no respect for how animals or stuntmen were treated, and trip wires were used for, on horses, which can be seen falling down during the opening train robbie, robbery. One of the tales Richard Harrison told at the Spaghetti Western Convention back in 2011 was during one of the films he starred in the Peplum, he was supposed to run up to the camera and throw either an axe or a spear, I don't remember. Anyways, he ran up to the camera and stopped. They called cut, cut, had him do it again. The second time he also ran up to the camera, stopped, and they called cut, cut, and they told him, why aren't you throwing the spear or the hatchet? He said, there's people out there. He says, don't worry, they're only extras. So to them, they meant nothing. They'd replace whoever they injured or killed the next day. Cinematography by, by cinematography, cinematographer Emilio Forescott is excellent, along with a nice score by Agisto Machi with the song Ballada del Treno, sung by Nico Fidenko, which adds much to the enjoyment. DVDs are available from Brazil, France, Germany, Japan, and the United States. Blu-rays are available from the United States, the UK, and Canada. Check the Spaghetti Western database for further information. 
In actors profiles, we have Richard Martin, played by Enrico Maria Salerno, who was born in Milan, Italy. On September 18, 1926, he was a director, stage, and film actor and film dubber. One of his three brothers was director Vittorio Salerno, born in 37, died in 2016. He was married twice and had five children. He appeared in over 120 films and TV appearances from 1948 to 1992 among which, which were four Spaghetti Westerns. But he's probably best known to Italian Spaghetti Western fans as the Italian voice of Clint Eastwood. Ricky Schott, or Philip Raymond, was played by Terry Jenkins. Terry Jenkins was born in Bedford, Bedfordshire, England, on February 6, 1936. He appeared in only three films, one of which was Paint Your Wagon in 1969 in the part of Mooney. It seems most of Jenkins' career was spent in the making of DVD features as he was a producer and director of several so-called drifting films, which relate to a car-driving fad in Tokyo during the early 2000s. He was married once and had a son, Michael, Jerry Tonk, Jenkin, Michael Terry Jenkins, who was born in 1954. Jenkins died of lung cancer in Los Angeles on April 5, 2009. By the way, Terry's voice was dubbed in the English version of Banditos. Betty Starr, or Betty Stewart, was played by Maria Martin. Maria Martin Vargas was born in Marbella, Andalusia, Spain, on July 14, 1923. She appeared in 89 films and TV appearances between 1943 and 1998. She usually played hard-nosed, tough women roles. Maria appeared in spaghetti, eight Spaghetti Westerns and is probably best remembered for her role as Kitty in The Hellbenders in 1968 with Joseph Cotton. Martin died in Barcelona, Spain on June 10, 2014. Billy Kane was played by Venantino Venantini. His re real name is Enrico Venantino Venantini, and he was born in Fabriano Marsh, Italy on April 17, 1930. He was an artist and film actor. Venantini only began acting as a way to finance his passion, art. He accept, accepted into the prestigious École Nationale Supérieure des Beaux Arts of Paris. He took on extra work in films like Ben-Hur in 1959 to finance his trip to France, which he made in a week on a Lambretta motor scooter. Venantini appeared in three Spaghetti Westerns and in 1999 won the Silver Ribbon for Best Supporting Actor, together with the other actors in the cast of Ettore Scola's The Dinner, 1998. He continued acting primarily in French productions until his death by complications from femur surgery on October 9, 2018. His son, Luca Venantini, followed in his footsteps and has become a prolific actor in his own right. Okay, now we'll go on to Book of the Week. Book of the Week I have is the Ultimate Director, Directory of Silent and Sound Era Performers. And this is basically a, a reference book. Uh, it's in English. I use it for reference for silent westerns um let me see real quick this was made in 1999 by four playdell gardens out of england it's got 500 and i'm sorry 622 pages and it's still available although it's pretty pricey but if you're interested in silent film and performers it's a must-have okay let's talk about autograph of the week Okay, autograph of the week is by recent passing of L.Q. Jones. And L.Q. Jones was a member of our Word on Westerns group, and he was there almost every time Rob put one on. He, he and Bo Hopkins both had fantastic picture, picture stories, and he was a delight to listen to, especially on stories on the Wild Bunch. Uh, he would delight the audience with uh, his humor and his bit of a 
bit of his stories were coarse, but they were they were lo loud and true. So we really miss him, and it was a shock when we learned of his passing because no one knew that he was ill or was under the weather. So that's our uh, autograph of the week, L.Q. Jones, and I have it in the uh, book Western Portraits, the Unsung Heroes and Villains of the Silver Screen, done by the late Steve Carver. There's getting more and more people in that book that are no longer alive. Took Steve 25 years to put that thing together, and I'm glad he did it because there's more and more passings, less and less of these people still around. Okay, let's talk about CD of the week. Okay, CD of the week is actually a series of CDs called Rare Spaghetti. And I've brought a couple of them out here to show you. There's another. And this was a series of CDs produced and released by Simon Griffin from Australia. They combined multiple rare tracks of music from a particular film along with, and actually films. It's more than one film per CD, along with trailer and radio advertisements. Most of the tracks were from film scores unavailable to the general public. There were seven CDs that I know of produced and even followed up with a 2002 CD. The music collectors of the world owed a debt of gratitude to Simon for giving us an outlet to hear this music on CD when it was not available from commercial sources. Simon himself was born in Bristol, England, and currently lives in Queensland, Australia. He owns and operates Kitten and Demur Fashion Boutique, and he's on Facebook for those who want to get in touch with him. I don't think he's got time to produce any more of these, but he may have some lying around that he'll sell you, and if he does, grab them. They're fantastic. Okay, now let's get into uh, autographs. I'm sorry. Posters of the Week, Tom's Poster Vault. Okay, I've got a couple of things here from uh, Four Bullets for Joe. This is a Italian photo booklet. This one actually folds out. With all the ad mats. This one's a, I don't have very I have very few Italian ad mats. This is what this was what was available on VHS. And as you can see, most of the time I saw it, I would pass it right up because I thought for sure this was a Mexican western. Okay, Banditos. I have the Belgian poster. And a lot of these, I thought, oh, they're never released in the United States. I never saw them in advertised any place. But uh, going to used bookstores, I found this. Well, somewhere it was released in the United States. I thought the same thing for Beyond the Law, that it was never released. But I found a press book. And it was released in Seattle at one time. So you never know, even though you can't find any reference to them, a lot of these things were on the drive-in circuit or released to smaller uh, cities to run in their small theaters. Okay, now let's do the weekly news. Okay, the weekly news. We have a new USA Blu-ray DVD release of That Dirty Black Bag Season 1, starring Douglas Booth, Dominic Cooper, Niv Sultan, and Guido Caprino. It was released on July 26, 2022 by AMC and contains two discs. It's in English with English subtitles and runs 6 hours and 25 minutes. There are no extras. So anyone like myself who wasn't going to sign up that network 
picked this thing up just to watch this series, which got either like or hate reviews. It's now available on DVD. Okay, we have some passings in Boot Hill this week. First of all, we have uh, Mario Bianchi, Italian director, assistant director, and writer, died in San Remo, Liguria, Italy, on July 27, 2022. He was 83. Bianchi was born in Rome on January 7, 1939, the son of director, writer, actor Roberto Bianchi Montero, uh, born in 1907, died in 1986. Mario directed over 100 films from 71 to 2001. He was also a screenwriter and assistant director on 21 films. He often used the aliases such as Frank Bronston, Renzo Spaziani, and Nicholas Moore. He directed five spaghetti westerns, including In the Name of the Father, The Son, and the Cult in 71 as Frank Bronston, Killed a Poker Player in 72 as Frank Bronston, where he was also the screenwriter, Fast Hand is Still My Name, 73 as Frank Bronston, for A Book of Dollars in 1973 as Renzo Spaziani, and a porno version of Zorro in 1996 as Nicholas Moore. He was also the writer there. He was assistant director on Black Tigress, which is also known as Lola Colt in 67, Hate Thy Neighbor, and Vendetta at Dawn in 68, Quinto Fighting Proud in 69 and Shango in 1970. He spent the majority of the 1990s directing pornography in Italy under the names Nicholas Moore, Tony Yanker, and Martin White. Also passing away this week, we have Carlo Casolo. She was a theater, film, TV singer, and voice actress. She died in Rome on July 24, 2022. She was 74. Casola was very active in the Italian theater and worked in films with such directors as Tinto Brass, Liliana Cavani, Antonio Reza, and Lucio Fulci. She was born on December 14, 1947 in Ter Terramina, Sicily, and she won a silver ribbon for her dubbing of Tilda Swinton in the film Orlando in 1993. She leaves a son, Guilio Pompliglioni, born in 1978. Carla appeared in two spaghetti westerns, Death Rides a Horse in 68 as Betsy, which I've never seen her in the film. She's The character is mentioned, but I cannot have an idea where she's mentioned. She might be seen in the uh, church exodus when the sheriff is talking to Bill and offering the deputy job, but it's in his crowd scene. Now, it may be a part of the film that's cut, was never released, but I don't remember ever seeing her. The other film she was in is she was filmed in The Genius, where this picture came from, and 1975, as she plays a prostitute. That film was with Terrence Hill. Also passing away this week is Paul Sorvino. He was an American film and TV actor. He died at the Mayo Clinic in Jacksonville, Florida on June, July 25, 2022. He was 83, born Paul Anthony Sorvino. He is the father of actors Myra Sorvino and Michael Sorvino. He was best known for his role in Goodfellows, in which he played Polly Cicero, and his role as the NYPD Sergeant Phil Soretta on the television series Law & Order. Sorvino appeared with Terrence Hill in the 2008 made-for-TV spaghetti westerns Doc West and Trigger Man as Sheriff Roy Basehart. Also passing away this week is uh, voice actor Tom Denninger. Tom Denninger was a German voice actor who died on July 22nd. He was born in Munich, Germany on September 29, 1950. He was one of the first moderators at the first private Berlin radio station, 106. He was the story bear at Radio Teddy and an actor at the Berlin Tribune and comedy for a, I'm sorry, comedy and Kuffer Standum. Dininger dubbed several spaghetti westerns, including Die for a Dollar in Tucson. He, in 64, he was the German voice of Danilo Turk, uh, which it was dubbed in 97. Lucky Luke, the TV version in 84, he was the German voice of Pedro Cucaracha. Also, They Call Me Renegade in 87, he was the German voice of Ron Althoff. Uh, he was in the new Zorro TV series in 1990. Uh, that's the, the, he was a German voice of fish. 
uh, also on Arizona Road in 1991, German voice of Franco Diogene. In Posse in 1993, he was the German voice of James Bigwood. In the 2000, 2001 TV series Lucky Luke, uh, he played the German voice of the barkeeper. So that was a, a comedy western. Okay, that's all we've got for you this week. Thanks for tuning in and hope to see you next week. We're going to do a special on the East German Westerns. So hope to see you next week. In the meantime, this was a Roberto Genesi production. And adios, amigos.